it should come as no surprise to you that I absolutely love activewear. Now I don't go crazy. I'm not some big influencer that gets sent all of these PR packages or anything like that. I purchase all my activewear with my own money. So I really have to be selective on which pieces I'm gonna shop for. I've been working out for many years, so I've accumulated a large activewear wardrobe over the years, but I always have my go-to pieces. And if you told me that tomorrow I had to get rid of the majority of my activewear, I absolutely know which pieces I would hang on to. So this video is all about activewear basics. Whether you're just starting working out, getting more of a consistent routine and looking for some basics to build your wardrobe, or if over the years you've done a lot of shopping for activewear and you're looking to have more of a minimal wardrobe, then I will tell you which items you should be purging and which ones you should be keeping. This video has something for everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am so happy you're joining me today. I have a very exciting video for you. If you're new here, it's so great to meet you. I post all types of content, wellness, fitness, self-care, and I love posting reviews on bathing suits, fitness wear, all the fun things. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having a huge fitness wardrobe and shopping every single drop that different brands have. Like if your closet is huge, I love that for you. I think the majority of us, myself included, can afford to be shopping every drop. We don't have the room to store the fitness wear in our closets. Like seriously, I can't afford to be shopping every single drop. Props to all these marketing companies. Like they are working overtime marketing a new drop. I feel they do such a great job with their social media, on their website, really making each drop feel unique, exciting, something that you have to have. But through the years, I've realized that buying trendy pieces and what's popular for that time, then it's not something I can wear year after year. I'd also like to say that lots of people shop for dupes of some of the high-end brands, and I think this is fine as well. But keeping in mind, if you are building a basics activewear wardrobe. You want something that you can probably wear every single week and wash every single week. And some of those dupes will end up pilling, ripping, and actually loosening up in some of the wrong places. Sometimes it is good to invest in some basics that are a little bit more high-end that you know are going to be good quality. And the pieces I'm gonna show you today, some of them I've had for many, many years and they look just as good as when I unpackaged them. I also would like to say that the basics I have from my wardrobe is based on the climate that I live in. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where six months of the year, it's quite chilly. You're gonna wanna wear leggings. Two months of the year, you're actually freezing your ass off. And in the summer months, it is so hot that you need shorts. So I need a variety of active wear options. I need lots of layering options. But if you live in a generally warmer climate where the temperature doesn't fluctuate too much, then your basics might be a little bit different than my basics. Let's get into it. Now, first I want you to think about how often you're going to the gym. I go to the gym five or six days a week. So for me, if I don't wanna be doing laundry during the week, then I need about five or six different outfits to get me through that week. And I'm not talking just about leggings, bras, and t-shirts. I'm also talking about underwear and socks. The other thing I'll say is that neutrals are gonna be your friend. So if you're only buying a couple of each item, you wanna be able to mix and match them freely without you know, having a pink pair of leggings with a red sports bra. These to me aren't really staples because you can't mix and match them. So sticking with more neutral colors is the best option for a basic activewear wardrobe. Everyone needs a staple pair of black leggings in their wardrobe. Now, what kind of black leggings you add to your activewear wardrobe is completely up to you. I have a summer pair and a winter pair because like I said, our winters can get as cold as minus 40 degrees Celsius and our summers can get as hot as about 35 degrees Celsius. So huge fluctuation in the temperature. I love black leggings, they're so versatile not only for in the gym, but for casual as well. So if you're looking for a good compressive thick black legging because it's winter time and you're trying to stay a little bit warm in the gym, or maybe it's because you're going to the gym on the heaviest day of your cycle. I always reach for my Honor Active Classic 2.0 Seamless Leggings in Black Marl. I absolutely love these leggings. They're super, super thick, so they keep me warm. They're 100% squat proof. They are nice and compressive. They don't move or shift when I'm working out. I do wear size extra small in these, and that is my true size. I'll put all my measurements in the description box below. And you can get a short or a regular length. I generally wear a regular 
shorter or tall length based on my height, but if you're a short gal, they also have a short as well. Again, I wouldn't say it's the cheapest legging. Depending on where you live in Canada, you do have to pay duties for it to get shipped from the UK, but if you're in the UK or somewhere else where you don't have to pay, it is a re really affordable legging, and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a thicker black staple legging. Now, if you live in a climate that is much warmer than where I live in Calgary, then you probably don't want a legging as thick as that because you will get quite warm unless your gym is heavily air conditioned. So the black legging that I choose to wear in the summertime, or even if I am working out on the heavy state of my cycle, I always like to wear a black legging on those days. I go with the Gymshark Legacy leggings. So these ones, Again, seamless, really comfortable. They're not as compressive, but really, really stretchy, really, really thin, kind of more of a sleek material. So it doesn't show any dog hair, which is great because that is something you need to look out for if you do have pets. And I find I can wear these leggings on a weight day or a cardio day, or I could even wear them with an oversized t-shirt for a more casual look if I'm out running errands. Now, I know some people don't like huge logos when they're wearing their leggings for casual. So my third black staple legging I have are my aloe yoga leggings. I absolutely love these. I will tag my aloe video here so you can hear all about them. Super, super brushed material, really, really soft. I've worn them at the airport on the airplane. I've worn them for travel. I just, I think they're really, really great leggings, really versatile. They definitely are a higher price point, but I've worn these multiple times and there's no pilling. The only thing I'll say is that it is more of a brushed soft fabric. So the dog hair does show on these. I'm always making sure that I'm kind of dusting off my butt so that I'm not walking around with dog hair on my ass. Three different types of black leggings. Do you need three different types of leggings? Absolutely not. However, like I said, my thick black legging, I don't necessarily want to be wearing in the summer or out running errands because it is quite compressive. And the Gymshark ones do have the big logo in the back. So it is nice to have a more casual legging without a logo. Obviously people love Lululemon Align leggings. I don't love them for myself and my body type. I just find that they don't look as flattering on my glutes and I'm constantly pulling them up at the waistband, but I know a lot of my friends swear by them. Again, a more expensive price point, but they will last you a long time. Next up, we have sports bras. Now, what color sports bras you choose to have in your activewear wardrobe is totally up to you. There are so many amazing, cute, different colors and styles out there, but I think it's really important, again, to stick with something neutral. Now, if you're only gonna be wearing black leggings, then what you're wearing up top doesn't really matter. But if you're gonna want to mix and match these sports bras with some colored shorts in the summertime, then neutral is your best friend. Also, I like to point out, and I say this in every video, I don't know how this became a thing that I say this in every video, I don't have any boobs, so I don't really need to look out for low impact versus high impact. I know this is a thing though. If you have cardio days, you need to wear a high impact bra. And for weight training, you can be a little bit more loosey and free. For me, it really doesn't matter. Nothing moves at all. Like I barely need to wear a bra as it is, but that is something you might wanna think about, a low impact and a high impact. Now, a couple sports bras that I have been loving and I find that I can reach for no matter what bottoms I'm wearing. I have the Nike sports bra and I'm sure you've seen this one. It's quite popular. It's just a regular racer and it does kind of have some fun mesh detailing on the side and in the center here. Again, it can be high or low impact for myself. I just find it's really, really comfortable. I just slip it on right over my head and it's fairly inexpensive. It's lasted me forever. I actually was looking for it in white as well, but it was sold out in my size. Even if I pair this with one of the black leggings with a shirt over top and I get too hot in the gym, I can pull my shirt off and I'm just wearing black on black, which is totally fine. A more expensive option that I also have is a Lululemon Flowy adjustable bra. Now, I don't wear Lululemon leggings because I don't find that they fit my body type, but their bras do fit me really well. So if you do have a small bus, I highly recommend checking out Lululemon. Look out for their sales. I rarely buy anything full price 
lace. Really like this one. It is, it does slip over my head, but there is a black um, eye hook closure as well. And again, it's a low impact bra, but for me, I can wear it high impact. And I just find I reach for these bras the most. As much as I love a cute white sports bra, I just can't really find one that works for me. Although today to the gym, I did wear my new white Halara sports bra and I did get so many compliments on it. So I will be adding that to my rotation. But again, just a neutral sports bra that I can wear with any color bottom. All right, let's talk shorts. Now shorts in my activewear wardrobe are the only piece of clothing where I go crazy with color. It's summertime when I'm wearing shorts and I think it's just so fun to have a pop of color. For some reason, I find it way easier to wear like a bright colored short than a bright colored legging. It just seems like a lot of color because I have quite long legs. If you live in a warm climate and wear shorts year round, probably just wanna to stick to neutral or at least have one or two neutral colors to mix and match. But for me, I only wear shorts a few months of the year and I love me some color. I'd say the two different styles that I reach for most this summer both happen to be Gymshark. I have the Gymshark Sweat Seamless in this galaxy purple color and it is amazing. And it doesn't roll, it doesn't move, it doesn't dig. These are my go-to shorts for the summer. I generally would match this just with one of my black sports bras and oversized tee over top. If I'm feeling really spicy, I'll just wear my sports bra and take my tee off. So yeah, for a thinner short on a cardio day where I'm going to be sweating a lot or on those days where it is actually, you know, 35 degrees Celsius, then I'm going again with the legacy, but these are the shorts. So I love, love, love these. Again, they're not as compressive, but they don't dig anywhere. They don't roll up. These are what work for me. Now, shorts. Shorts are such a specific thing. I have many, many friends in the gym that even in the summertime refuse to wear shorts and that's totally fine. It's not because they're embarrassed about their legs or anything like that. They just find it uncomfortable. You have to find the length of short that works for you. It is all dependent on your body type. Some girls can wear four inch shorts and not have any issues with camel toe or with it riding up. Others need to stick with a five or six, which is slightly longer, which is what I wear and I found works for me. And there's others that need more of a cycling length that hit the smallest part of their thigh and that's how you avoid any type of rolling up so you need to find what works for you again we see all these beautiful models online on websites on social media and just because they are rocking a pair of short shorts doesn't mean that they're comfortable in them in the gym keeping in mind that they are standing there for a photo shoot getting their picture taken in these shorts if you're gonna be squatting deadlifting doing burpees in shorts you need to make sure they work for you otherwise you need to get rid of them out of your activewear wardrobe donate them give them to a friend that likes smaller shorts. Just don't have them kicking around and stop buying shorts that aren't gonna be suitable for the style of workout that you do. And that brings me to your layering pieces. As much as I'd love to roll up to the gym in a pair of short shorts and a sports bra, I work out at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. So it's generally a little bit cooler in the morning and I do need some layering pieces. Get me past my warm up until I can either remove it or if it's thin enough, I just leave it on for the entire workout. You can go with some colored pieces here, but I like to stick to neutrals again because I like colored shorts then sticking with a white or black t-shirt I think is just easy I'm not struggling to match my clothing in the morning it's all just really simple a couple options that I love I have the Gymshark oversized tee in white I love this it is a thicker shirt you actually can't see through it which is amazing so I can pair this with my shorts if I'm feeling like my shorts are a little bit too short, I can throw on this oversized tee with a black sports bra underneath, I'm good to go. And then if I do get too hot, I can take that oversized tee off. And because it's white, it goes with absolutely everything. I've even worn it just with joggers while I'm running errands doing kindergarten drop off. And I've, <laughs> I think the pieces I reach for the most are actually my Nike crop tees. These are super thin, super lightweight, and super soft. I have this in white and black and I Again, they were fairly inexpensive and they've held up great. I wear them once a week and I wash them with my workout clothing on gentle. There's no pilling. I don't even think the black has faded at all. It looks brand new. And this piece is just so great to wear for your entire workout. It's so thin. If there's a day where I'm feeling a little bit bloated, uncomfortable, or I just don't wanna be showing my stomach, then throwing it on over my shorts 
has been a lifesaver. I just feel like I feel more confident at the gym and it's so breathable that it feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. So highly recommend checking out that Nike t-shirt. All right, next up we have underwear. I know some of us don't wear underwear underneath our leggings or shorts. So I was definitely one of the girlies that went commando until a few years ago when I started wearing more scrunch leggings. Then I found that there was no mystery about what was going on underneath those leggings. Like you could see everything. So I started doing my research on seamless thongs that I could wear underneath my leggings, no show thongs. And I tried many, many different kinds. And I finally found the best kind that works for me and my body type, where it feels like I'm basically wearing nothing at all. And I don't know how to say the name of them, but they are just from Amazon. I honestly have 20 pairs of these. They're very inexpensive. They're very, very soft. I did size up, so I did get a small because I didn't want this to be too tight. And then you know when you have like the roll, I just didn't want that to be seen underneath my leggings because then it's not not technically no show, but highly, highly recommend these. Now I just wear black because I have dark skin. I know other people need to wear the closest to their skin color. So these do come in a nude. I believe this is a nude or maybe there is a darker, but yes, for me, I just wear black. And like I said, you're gonna wanna have enough seamless thongs to get you through your week so that you're not having to do laundry all the time. Next up we have socks. And I think socks are so particular for the person. My socks are not anything fancy at all. I think they might just be from Costco or maybe Winners, but they're the Umbro socks. They might actually be discontinued, I don't know. But regardless, I wear a white sock. I'd say socks are generally cut kind of right here. And there's nothing worse than when your sock starts to roll down in your shoe. I hate that so much. Maybe it's just the kind of foot I have or the shape of the foot, but I like my sock to come slightly higher up. I also have quite a few pairs of crew socks as well that I'll wear mix and match through the gym. Now, I always like to wear a cushioned sock, something that is gonna be good for jumping, running, that type of thing. But generally for a weight day, you don't need a lot of cushioning in your sock. I just don't like to have different socks for different days. So I just wear the same style of sock regardless of what workout I'm doing. Now, I didn't even want to comment on shoes, but obviously shoes are part of your basics for going to the gym. Again, I think this weird culture that we're in tells us that we need multiple pairs of shoes. I do not think that's the case. I've worn the same pair of shoes for the past six months, and because I work out five to six days a week, I generally change them out every six-ish months. If you're running or doing a lot of jumping high impact, then you might wanna change them out a little bit quicker and you'll be able to tell right away when they need to be changed out. If you're starting to notice, you know, pain in your ankles, not enough support. Been obsessed with the Lululemon Strong Feel shoes. I've worn them for about six months now and I go to F45 and I wear them as my hybrid shoe. I find they have enough support for my weight training as well as my cardio days. They feel really stable for both. Now I have narrow feet, so it has very good ankle support and I have been loving these. So if you haven't checked out the Lululemon shoes before, I highly recommend it. I believe they also have like a guarantee period where you can wear the shoes to your gym for 30 days and if you don't like them, you can return them. So definitely take advantage of that. When I first got really big into weight training, I was wearing Nike Metcons. These are more of a flat shoe and I found them to be really stable for doing squats and deadlifts and whatnot, but not as good for a cardio day. So I just didn't wanna have two different pairs of shoes going to F45. So I have one shoe and when I feel like they're going and I need more support, I'm probably just gonna rebuy the same shoe. All right, last but not least are accessories. Nothing that you need to buy. Just because you see someone at the gym or someone on Instagram with something doesn't mean you have to go buy it. Only accessory that I use would be my gym bag if you count that as an accessory. Did just replace my old gym bag because the lining ripped inside and all my stuff was like falling inside if you know what I mean. I don't buy things that I don't need. I don't have multiple gym bags or anything like that. I buy something that I like, I wear it until it's broken or ripped and then I buy a new one. So I did purchase the Honor Active mini gym bag which I love because it fits my shoes, my keys, my phone, my wallet, an extra pair of socks, my chapstick, and I'm good to go. I don't need anything large. I don't need anything excessive. I love this gym bag so much, but I know a lot of people that literally just carry their shoes and water bottle into the gym. They don't even have a bag. So you don't even need a bag if you don't want it. All right, there you have it. 
back to basics. What you didn't see in my basics wardrobe is crazy patterns, crazy styles. That's not something that I consider to be basic. It's not something that I consider to be what you can wear for many, many years. Sticking with classic styles, classic colors is gonna be your friend. Something that I love to do if you are considering downsizing your closet is keeping something in your closet for a full season and if you did not touch that item it's time to donate like i said i reach for these pieces week after week i wash them week after week there's pieces sitting in my closet that now that summer has passed i know it's time for them to be donated and there we have it i hope this video was helpful for you i hope you recognize that just because a brand you love is doing drop after drop after drop doesn't mean you have to be emptying your wallet if there's something you love 100 percent buy it treat yourself but don't go crazy don't go overboard stick with the basics stick with the pieces that are going to stick with you long term if you like this type of content be sure to hit that thumbs up that way it can tell the algorithm to share this video with other like-minded individuals if you want to be part of the family be sure to subscribe i appreciate all your love in this video and all my past videos and i can't wait to see you in my next one i hope you have a great day and bye for now